Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. Today is Thursday, January 27th, 2022, and I am here with my partner Andrew Hansen to discuss an NBA two-game slate, which is very strange that it's that small. And by the way, I am Joe Sarvati, affectionately known as Coach. Andrew, are you ready for this gigantic two-game slate? It's going to take us a couple hours to break this one down. Yeah, a little surprising that it's two games on a Thursday, but you know I like these small slates, and we've got some interesting matchups, a lot of studs to consider, so I'm looking forward to it. Excellent. Great to have you back for these Thursday podcasts. I was solo for a while during football, so it'll be good to have you in there. I know we're going to get some much better slates as far as size, but hey, you can win just as much in a two-game slate as you can a 12-game slate. you just got to play the right players. You sure can. So we're going to break it down here and uh, pick out the winners. Excellent. Uh, If you are watching us on YouTube real quickly as you're coming in the door here, quick thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, a little comment. We'd really appreciate that. Helps us move up uh, the algorithm. And for those that watch every day, some new, uh, new duds here. What do you think of the threads, Andrew? Yeah, pretty solid. I like the two color hat there. Yeah, I went with the blue and white. I think uh, I I watched you guys football. I think uh, the opposite for Crash, you went with the white with the blue. So, uh, you know, we're getting getting a little bit sharper here uh, at Coach Talk. I still like your black and white. uh, That's our old school first podcast look. It looks brand new still. So if you want any of our stuff, uh, check out our website, dfscoachtalk.com. We have... um, uh, a link there that you can order whatever you'd like of Coach Talk, uh, Coach Talk stuff. Great gear, some fun stuff. So, all right, man. Uh, first game is a 7:30 game. It's the LA Lakers and Philadelphia 76ers. Um, let me set a little bit of a tempo for you, and then you can start breaking it down for us. The spread in this game is Philly minus two and a half. implied for Philly, 107.75 for the Lakers. Injury designations, Anthony Davis probable, certainly counting him in at this point. Um, Dumbuyu is uh, doubtful, so we don't think he's going to contribute there. And Kendrick Nunn has been out all year. He remains out. For Philly, Danny Green is the questionable guy, which would cut into a few minutes for the court. Cork Maz and Thibels of the world. The guys we know that are out are Curry, Milton, and Simmons. So interesting game here. I'll throw one more stat at you, Andrew, and then let's break this sucker down. Um, as far as pace of play, Lakers second, Philadelphia 24th. So that's significant. Major pace up game for Philadelphia, major pace down game for the Lakers. Defensively, Middle of the road teams, 15th and 13th. So I don't think we're going to be seeing any Charlotte uh, 158s, I wouldn't believe. But uh, that's what it looks like. So that's the first game at 730. What do you? What is your initial take uh, in this matchup? It should be a fun one. Yeah, it, it should be a fun one. Um, you know, I'm going to start with LeBron here. Um, I, I didn't play him against Brooklyn with AD coming back. I wanted to see how that played out. Right. And it did not slow down LeBron at all. 33, 7, and 6. Really efficient. 14 of 21 from the field. He's been on a tear lately. Uh, one of the best stretches of his career. AD played 25 minutes. Uh, Vogel talked about wanting to get him a little bit more. But I don't think it's going to be enough to take away usage-wise from LeBron. Uh, and I also think LeBron's going to be motivated here. You know, when Kobe passed away, uh, the, they had played here. Phil, uh, the Lakers had played in Philly the night before. They were on the the plane back when they heard the news. Uh, I think LeBron will be thinking about that. Um, you know, not to mention he's going up against Embiid, nationally televised game. Uh, so I think LeBron continues to get after it here. Uh, another one of his strong performances, and I'm willing to pay up for him here on both sides. What are your thoughts here on LeBron? You know, I mean, it's he's undeniably just having an incredible stretch of his career. Who would believe it'd be this late in his career? That's what's incredible. I mean, I, I was reading something on Twitter the other day, 
And the first team he took to the NBA Finals with the Cavaliers, every single player has been long gone from the league. So not only is he in, incredible right now, but the longevity is, you know, I think it's being taken for granted. I mean, I know we have Tom Brady and he's sort of the, you know, the poster child for a guy that could play forever. But man, LeBron has been terrific. And, you know, I'm with you. I, he's my favorite pay up guy here. I know he's going to be chalky, but I just don't think you can chase those points. I, I think your your points are very valid. I was going to also mention <clears throat> the Kobe and, and Gigi thing when he greeted Kobe there on the sidelines during the game, you know, two years ago uh, yesterday, which, uh, you know, it's certainly going to be on his mind being in Philly, you know, where Kobe's from and the whole whole thing. So that extra motivation, we know that he's always fantastic on televised games, nationally televised games. You can statistically see an, a rise in his numbers for those. And uh, just a nice matchup. So I agree with you uh, on LeBron completely. I do think Davis may start cutting into that, though. I think as he gets to that 30-minute mark plus, uh, something we'll have to watch in for future games. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, LeBron is expensive, so you still you hesitate a little bit. But, you know, he is also my favorite pay-up option. Um, in terms of the rest of the Lakers starters, uh, Westbrook – you know, seven for 14 is good for him. 50% against Brooklyn, but that's um, on fire for him. Are yeah, you kidding? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't think he's going to make my build though. And I think, you know, AD will certainly have an impact on Westbrook here uh, tonight. And then in, the, in the near future, other starters would likely likely to be Avery Bradley and Stanley Johnson. Stanley Johnson's going to be feeling good tonight. Cause he just signed that two year deal. That's but, incredible. Yeah, so good for him. I, you know, I think he'll be in a in a great mood. Uh, but you know, he we know he's out there for his defense. Uh, so I, I don't think we need to play him. Avery Bradley, you know, there's a bunch of guys on this slate in the three to four K range that you know could be the last guy in, and he's been getting twenty four to thirty minutes. They they have him out there for his defense as well. He's very cheap on DraftKings at thirty two. Uh, he's not my favorite guy in that group, though. I, I certainly would play him over Stanley Johnson if I wanted to go with one of those other starters. Um, but the bench is is kind of interesting for the Lakers, too, because Monk, Reeves, and THT got solid minutes against Brooklyn, and they're all in a pretty good price range. You know, Monk, 4,500 on DraftKings, 44 fan duel. He got hot again against Brooklyn, six of 12 on his threes, 28 minutes. You know, he had a nice run there as a starter and, you know, coming off the bench, I think he's going to be the first scorer yet. We, I, we know Mello is, is there, but he's going to take a hit from AD. So Monk is my favorite play off that bench. Um, and Taylor Horton Tucker is a real GPP option because, you know, he can throw up duds like against Brooklyn where he's over from the field, but, you know, he can also give you 30 fantasy points if he if he puts it all together. So for the Lakers overall, I'm looking at LeBron, probably Monk. Uh, those are my two favorite plays. Yeah, you know, it's I'm I'm a little confused on the Lakers bench now, though, because they're getting production because they they sort of figured out what they want to do with their starting lineup and such. You know, we Monk was such a go to for us at a good price for quite a while. But, you know, I just get afraid of the amount of minutes and touches he's going to get, especially with AD being back, because even though it's different position, AD is going to soak up some of that usage. And like you said, I mean, I think that directly affects probably Carmelo the most and maybe THT, you know, but you never know what you're going to get from him. He's a young player. And like you said, he's he's all over the board. So I certainly don't trust him for cash. But, you know, they also get Austin Reeves in there. Uh, you've seen a little bit of Trevor Ariza at times. So it's the bench now with Stanley Johnson and everybody. It becomes a little bit tougher in cash games for me to pull the trigger. So really for the Lakers, I know it sounds strange, but it's like LeBron or bust until I think Davis is willing to you know, pay off that 9.8 salary. So not as sure about the bench, but uh, you know, hopefully – once AD takes back over, it won't be as much of a question. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the Philly side? You're going to be able to pay up for Embiid as well? 
Well, that's that's the tough decision. I mean, you know, can you have two payups? And is you know, I think we agree that probably the Braun may, may be the best one. At least I that's my belief. Then your other guys that you have to consider are Embiid, pretty much Cat at nine two is close, and then Steph at ten three. So those, you know, can you fit two of those in your builds? I absolutely because there is enough bench and value guys in there. So I think there's two type of builds you can go after. And I put together a couple prior here to the podcast, one where I went with uh, LeBron and Embiid, and one when I went a little bit cheaper uh, and I went uh, LeBron and Curry uh, because you save $1,000 there. And, uh, you know, it works out pretty good. But then, you know, your third option, which I didn't build yet because I don't, I'm not sure I want to go there is you can go just LeBron and then all second flight guys that where you're not taking a risk on a monk or a Carmelo or THT, whatever. So just wanted to mention that that, because as of now, uh, Embiid is my second favorite buy up. I mean, that dude is playing uh, as good, probably better the last week than the Joker. I mean, I know the Joker had that one ninety something game, but Embiid has just been absolutely murdering it. I mean, since <clears throat> they've been a little shorthanded on and off, he's just dominated play. And I know it's tough with LeBron at 11-1 and Embiid at 11-4. Doesn't make things super pleasant filling out the rest, but he's been that dominant. And as much as I appreciate AD's interior defense, I think that, uh, you know, he's still only playing probably 25 to 28 minutes is what I'm, I've am i got AD for. So that gives Embiid some free run, and it also makes the Lakers bench a little bit deeper because I'm just thinking when AD goes out, they may be forced to play Dwight Howard, which who's been out of the mix there, which will take a few minutes from some of the other guys. Do you Do you agree with that point? Because I was thinking about it, if they don't, do that, then and who's going to guard and be, you know? I do. I mean, I wrote him down and it's scary, but how could they not use Dwight for at least a few minutes against MB? Otherwise, LeBron's going to have to guard him. I mean, don't we want to, you know, doesn't Vogel want to have LeBron focused on offense and and instead of dealing with the MVP beast potential of, of Embiid? Exactly. Uh, I mean, and, I, I think it makes sense, but, you know, Vogel. I don't think he has a choice, like you said. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, pure GPP for Dwight because he might not play, but if he does, you know, he can he can certainly get it done. I mean, and and Bede showed that he was when he was dominating the Pelicans in that last game. You know, he wasn't doing too much defensively to Hernan Gomez, who went off, uh, and Jackson Hayes got his as well. I mean, we know he's he's tough when he when he wants to be, but you know, there's room for Dwight if he gets 15 minutes uh, to pay off his salary. Yeah, and I I don't know don't know if I'm as courageous to actually dial up Dwight, but I mean I can see it in the GPP. I I think even if he gets that 12 to 15 minutes, he's going to come in there, you know, he knows Embiid well for sure after backing him up and stuff. So he's he uh, is going to bang on him a little bit, try to disturb him. But all I think he'll do is probably send him to the line. <laughs> yeah, he'll probably get a bunch of foul shots when Howard's in there. But I I think you know the reason I want to mention is because I think it. It hurts that rotation for the Lakers and those bench players because it just grabs a few more extra minutes. But uh, I'm with you, though. I'm all about Embiid. Uh, and and then I think you've got some great options here. I think Maxi's fair at 6'4". Court Maz, who, who we know is, can be GPP-ish because he's hot or not hot at 4'8". At Thibel at 3'6". So you got three fairly you know cheap uh, guys there that are going to get decent minutes. I think that they're all very playable, and it helps you to build up to those two uh, two pay up guys. Now you have to sacrifice the to Tobias Harris's of the world if you're going to go up to like a LeBron and Embiid. But uh, you know, I that's probably what I'm willing to do, and just go with more of the backcourt that's much more value. Yeah, I agree. Embiid's also my second favorite pay up. Uh, it's a lot tougher on DraftKings to do it. Um, so for on draft on DraftKings, for example, I do think you probably have to sacrifice Tobias Harris if you go with LeBron and Embiid. 
Uh, Mac, I'm also interested in Maxi. I also like his price on FanDuel at 5,800. Uh, Corkmaz is also in the mix for me. Mid 4K range is great for him on a two game slate. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, a little bit of a wild card here with Danny Green. If he plays, been dealing with the hip, he's been out for a while. Um, if he plays, you know, it, it makes you want to shy away from Corkmaz and Thibel. But I still think there's a chance that if he plays, Thibel will start. And Thibel is 3,600 on DraftKings. Which I think is terrific. It is uh, forty three hundred on FanDuel. You know he showed his type of game last time out. Thirty three minutes. He only scored three points, but four rebounds, three assists, and three stocks. Um, and even if Green plays and starts, I think Thibel will play at least twenty four minutes. Uh, so I like him here as a value play, and he is cheaper than Corkmaz on both sites. So if I had to pick one, I, I would pick Thibel, but Corkmaz is still in the mix for me and. Uh, th- those are the guys I'm focused on with Philly. I don't think I'll get to Joe Niang or Drummond. I agree completely. And, you know, that's something we'll have to watch. We'll certainly have that news before lock. But I think if, if Danny Green doesn't start, then I feel fantastic with the Cork Maz and Thibel. That's no problem. If he does, I'm with you, though. I agree. I think Thibel still gets minutes. He just doesn't score a lot of points. He'll get you stocks, but... I'm just, you know, that could scare me if Green gets the start over him, you know? Yeah, it's not ideal. It's easier to get 30 minutes as a starter. But two games slate with his pricing, uh, if you're going to go with LeBron and Embiid, um, I don't don't see how you pass up Thibel. I don't see, you know, several other better options in that price range. I agree. I just cross my fingers and hope he gets the start over Green, though. Right. All right, anything else in this game that you wanted to mention? Uh, I think that covers it for me. Yeah, if we're both paying up for LeBron and Embiid, we're going to we're going to see our name on some of the boards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would right. hope. Yeah, it's just a matter of, of do we finish it out through the night game. Oh, I know. And that that can be very tedious. I know I always preach to everybody, you know, don't it doesn't matter when the games are, play the best players, but it is it is painful when you have to watch a full game and just root for guys to miss shots and turn it over. Yeah, and just root for the game to end, especially <laughs> if it's close. It's the worst if you think it might go to overtime. Yeah, the one game it was getting so bad, I, I told Dawson, I said, maybe the lights will go out in the gym and they'll have to cancel the rest <laughs> of the game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's when you know you're in trouble. <laughs> All right, let's go to the second game, 10 p.m. Eastern. So nice, you know, one game after the other, you get to see every play of every game. It is the Minnesota Timberwolves and Golden State Warriors. Much nicer total here, Andrew. It's Golden State minus six. It's a 229.5 total. So it's 11.5 points higher than the the, uh, first game. So another reason why a little bit of sweat there if we're stacking up that first game. Um, 111.75 implied for Minnesota. 117.75. Uh, for the Golden State Warriors. Minnesota comes in at 24 and 23. Golden State at a nice 35 and 13. Not too many designations here. We're starting to slow down with all of these guys being out, which is sweet. Um, for Minnesota, you've got Jalen Noel is probable, and he's been a nice guard off the bench for them. And then Patrick Beverly, a questionable once again. So he always gets uh, under our skin here. Either play or sit, man. Quit going questionable. Last time he did sit, so we'll see what the news is there. And then uh, the Golden State D Green, known as Draymond Green, is out, along with Iguodala that hurts Golden State. He plays a bigger role off the bench than people realize. And the big man, second-year player Weissman, is also out. So going in here, statistically, we can look at uh, Minnesota, the third fastest team in the league golden state ninth so that's why you have an inflated total there approaching 230 defensively uh, minnesota better than people really give them credit for their 12th so they're in that upper half they should win more games with as good as they play it doesn't make sense but uh, golden state still hanging on by a thread to the number one defensive efficiency rating uh, even with draymond out so that's sort of the game set here, Andrew. I'm very interested to see 
uh, you know, where you're going to focus on this game with obviously if we're both sort of in that mode of chalkiness of, of LeBron and Embiid, how are you going to uh, salvage this game? Where are you looking? Well, I'm probably not going to be able to afford Cat. Um, so that's, you know, uncomfortable. We're going to have to fade a star or two on this slate. Right. And interesting. You know, he talked recently about how he doesn't have to be the leading scorer every night for the Timberwolves. And then he goes out and only takes seven shots against Portland. And yeah. Anthony Edwards goes off, um, you know, for 40. So I like Edwards here again. Um, his price is great. You get some exposure to this offense. Uh, earlier in the season, he actually scored 48 against Golden State. And then the, the, the second matchup, he only scored nine. And that's the thing with Edwards is he's a little bit inconsistent. He can be very scoring dependent. Yeah. Uh, 7,300 on FanDuel I like for him. So he's probably my favorite, you know, pay up, so to speak, mid-tier and higher for Minnesota. I've got some interest in D'Angelo Russell going back to Golden State where he played for a bit. I do think it is a really important piece of news, though, with Beverly. If Beverly starts, you know, that can really cut into Russell, his minutes and his usage. Right. Uh, so that's why I favor Edwards over Russell. Um, and then after that, you know, maybe a, a value play for Minnesota. We'll, we'll have some options on the Golden State side as well. Vanderbilt, real nice outing last time, but he's very inconsistent. And if he doesn't hit and he's 5,500 to 6K, then it, it really hurts. Um, Beverly, speaking of him, if he plays 4,200 on DraftKings is a nice little sn sneaky play, I think. Right. Um, so I'm, I'm eyeing him there, not so much on FanDuel. And then, you know, the bench I'm not in love with, um, Noel, uh, that that'll be a big piece of news for that bench, you know, and you, you can try to set it up so that you could slot him in there and then pivot to Beasley. Uh, if he doesn't play Beasley should get a little more action. Uh, Jordan McLaughlin would be that next man up if they're both out, but he hasn't played much lately at all. So I'd probably go with Beasley, uh, but I'm not interested in Prince or Reed. So really, uh, Edwards, you know, and then maybe Russell or Beverly, uh, and then maybe Beasley off the bench. Well, I mean, I'm with you on the fact that, like I said, you know, this Pat Bev news is so important, and it affects both sides of the ball because, you know, it, it definitely shuffles down some minutes and usage. Even though he's not a volume shooter, it still affects that Minnesota rotation. And secondly, it affects Golden State because, you know, he's going to guard Steph. So um, I'm right as of right now, no official news. He's completely 50-50 questionable. I think he plays because he's been close to playing. It's Curry. It's national TV. I think he straps, you know, laces him up and gets out there. So my initial, you know, breakdown here is gonna, going to include him being in. So <clears throat> I think more... Uh, it's going to be uh, a little down, down play for me on the two guys that will get a lot of play in Russell and Edwards. I, <clears throat> When Beverly plays, I'm not as confident in Russell being able to dominate the ball as much. And Edwards, I, you know, I don't want to chase that last game. That was a bit of an aberration where occasionally he'll get a game where he just gets a ton of shots up. But again, Cat's not going to have single-digit shot nights very often. And I think at 8-1 on DraftKings, it's just too big of a price to pay. So <clears throat> for me, I'm, I'm probably, that could be my contrarian piece of not having any exposure to Russell or Edwards. I agree with you, though. If Pat Bev is in, in, um, counted in without a minutes restriction, at 4-2, he is an option. Um, but I prefer Jared Vanderbilt. I know he's been inconsistent, but at 5-5, you know, you get him at the right game, he's going to get you a 7-8x. And they uh, experiment by starting he and McDaniels the, la <clears throat> the last game, which I think didn't really work. They're somewhat similar players, and I think it's better with McDaniels coming off the bench, you know, to back him up. So if he's the feature guy in that power forward spot starting um, at 5-5, five, five, I think it's a fair price for sure. So I'm looking more there. Um, I really not 
too trustworthy in Beasley at all. He can throw some monster clinkers on the board. And uh, I know his price has gone plummeted to 3-6. I remember last year, I think we paid 7K for him at one point. But uh, yeah, he's plummeted. Jalen Noel, I think, is super talented. I love the guy. But when he's the third string guy behind Beverly Russell and then him, it's just so hard to expect him to get minutes. But if Beverly does sit, then <clears throat> Noel is in my player pool because I think he's got some game. Um, what about the Golden State side, Andrew? What are you thinking on, on that run? Well, I'm not going to pay up for Steph in my initial build that has LeBron and Embiid in it. Um, and then if Beverly plays, he's going to make it harder on Steph. Clay, I'll consider, though, you know, real nice price range on, on both sides. His minutes are creeping up. He got up to 26 minutes last game, and that was a blowout. Uh, so I think he'll get 26 minutes again. Yes, Minnesota is better defensively, but in this pace-up game, you know, Clay, they're going to continue to feed him while he's out there. Uh, they changed his time on the court of when he was playing, and it uh, seemed to work better. Instead of having him come out for the first five or six minutes and then wait till the end of the first half, they brought him back out sooner in the first half. So with his second game using that setup, uh, you know, I think he'll he'll be in a pretty good groove. Yeah. So I like and Clay. Just, not to interrupt, but just to to tell you, they also did that in the second half, which help which makes him in there to finish, which I think is huge. Yep, absolutely. Uh, Wiggins uh, would be behind Clay for me. You know, he probably will get a few more minutes, you know, and he's at about the same price. Uh, but again, they're, they're just feeding clay while he's out there. I mean, it's, it's a clear mission. Let's get him shots while he's playing to take advantage of his expertise. Um, Otto Porter Jr. Fair price. You know, you, you could plug him in. Um, but I'm more interested in Looney here as the other starter. Uh, he's in the 4k range on both sites. We know the cat is not a defensive stopper. Uh, the first matchup this year, Looney went for 11 and 17 against Minnesota. So I think right. he makes things work, and you can play him as a power forward on FanDuel. Right. So I like Clay and Looney here. And then with the bench, you know, I don't I don't know if I'll go there. We've got uh, Poole and Lee and Peyton all, you know, fighting for minutes. Kuminga had a nice game last game, but it was, you know, mop-up duty. Uh, and Bielitsa played well, too, with a double-double against Dallas. But, uh, you know, he he'd... Uh, Again, just be GPP only for me. Um, so looking at Clay and Looney primarily. Yeah. I Did you see the dunk Kaminga had, by the way? I did not see that, no. Oh, my goodness. He rose up on uh, Josh Green, the second-year player for the Mavs, and just, I don't know, it's like he had an extra gear. I mean, he brought it up further, cocked it back, and just, yeah, you'll have to, you'll have to Google that one. It, it is sweet. He's got some um, athleticism. Oh, I'll tell you what, that kid is going to be a player. I think he deserves to be in that rotation. That's that's just me. I mean, you got to put up with some rookie mistakes, but man, his talent and his athleticism is just sick. Yeah, no doubt. But, you know, he, he kind of went from getting some spot starts to then only eight to 10 minutes. Uh, so GPP guy. Definitely. I, I probably won't even play him. I mean, i I just don't trust, you know, you can't take take that risk really on on a any slate, let alone a two gamer. But I'm just, you know, I'm just hoping Steve Kerr listens to this <laughs> <laughs> and you know wises up and gets Kaminga in there. Come on, Steve. But uh no, I I'm with you on on not risking it, but I have got my eye on him because once they say, hey, he's in the rotation, even at 25 minutes at a cheap price. I think he could be awesome. So I'll be looking for some coach speak. Maybe maybe I can speak it to life and he'll get in there. But uh, as of now, I, I the three guys I'm focusing on are, are, are pretty easy here for me. Clay, I think, is somewhat of a no-brainer. I'm with you there. He's my favorite play on Golden State. At 5-3 with this new rotation, just as you brought up in the first half and then sec especially in the second half where he finishes, I think makes him just a terrific play. He's going to get up like 15 shots in the time he's in there. He's shooting the ball. And at 5'3", he starts making those. 
um, <clears throat> it's going to be a big difference because, you know, if Pat Bev plays, he's guarding Curry, not Clay. So Clay's going to get some free run and shots up. I think um, one thing I noticed, you, you know, the big, it's just an amazing thing that when Clay plays, it's all that, almost the majority of the usage and um, just entire rotation in the offense is, is just hammered for Wiggins. He just plays like a, a you know, third role and just stands in the corner. But, um, you know, it's hard to play him when he's in there with Clay. Now, when Clay sits his games, you know, as part of his recovery, then Wiggins steps back up. But um, I've, you know, that seems to be a common theme since Clay's come back. So I'm not as crazy about Wiggins, and he's a little bit more expensive, uh, expensive at five seven. The two guys I'm focusing on too: Porter Jr. at five one, Looney at four seven. You can play a second center, so you can go and beat in Looney on the other sites, or <clears throat> like you said, he's power forward eligible on uh, FanDuel, so you could play both he and Embiid. Not that Looney's the guy you want to run to to play, but at 4-7, they do need him in there to defend Cat. I mean, they've been playing uh, Bielitsa as backup center, which is sort of wild, and uh, <clears throat> I don't think he could check Cat. So you're going to get a little extended minutes from Looney. Um, Bielitsa did have a decent game the last game, but Anybody that's over six, eight or whatever that can play the post has a big game against Dallas. So I'm not taking as much stock there. I agree with you. I don't trust the, the bench, especially pool. You never know what that dude's going to do. Air balls or swishes, who knows? So at five, four, not going to risk it there. Um, <clears throat> Peyton's also in that mix too. So when you have Peyton, pool and Lee all sharing the backup guard minutes, and then they're, you know, putting Kaminga, at times in for a bit and uh, Bielitsa. I just don't want to mess uh, with their growing bench. So for me, I'm with you, man. I think uh, Thompson, Porter, and Looney would be the options. And all of those fairly good value prices make the other guys work, you know? Yeah, and I, I don't mind having a couple of the Golden State starters pace up game here, higher total. Uh, and it's convenient that those guys are priced where they are uh, to make the lineup work for us. Yeah. That, my, you know, my only concern is, or do you think we're going to be just dead chalk donkeys with LeBron and, and Joel? Um, possibly. Um, but I, I'm okay with that. You know, if we nail all the other spots. Uh, it's fine. Um, yeah. And, you know, there's going to be ownership for Steph and Kat. So it's not like there aren't any other options that people want to play in right, that price range. Right. Well, I'm going to, I'm, you know, cash games, I think those are the two guys to play. I really do. I think you're chasing points if you don't. But in some of my GPPs, I may try to put a little bit different twist on there. You know, but my question to you is, push comes to shove, who do you like better, Cat or Curry? Uh, that's a tough one. Um, probably Cat, but barely, because okay. I, I respect Looney's defense. Uh, I'm just projecting that Pat Beverly will play as well as you okay. are. And I, and I think he'll limit Steph and Steph's numbers are down with clay out there because he's feeding him like everybody else. Right. And he's been in a shooting slump. Right. So, you know, cat's a little bit cheaper. Um, so I would, I would go cat first, but not with a lot of confidence. Yeah. It's, it's close, but I agree. I mean, you can save a thousand one on top of it. So that makes the decision a little bit easier. But we're we're on the same uh, plane of thinking here. And on the two-game slate, it's, you know, <laughs> it's going to come down to the Porters and Cork Mazes and, you know, uh, all Vanderbilts and Thompsons. You know, it's going to be the second-flight guys that make a difference, I think, the most part. Absolutely. Yeah, looking forward to it, though. Good slate, fun matchups. Uh, let's get after it. Definitely. And if you want to join us, great time to jump in. Thursdays are always a fun day to, to jump in with us. You can get in for as little as uh, 10 bucks for three full days of access of Coach Talk. Just go to dfscoachtalk.com and you can sign up right there. We still have our four sports special that takes you all the way to the third week of June and you get all of our PGA, MLB, hopefully if they play. Um, and then, of course, the NFL. We, this weekend in the Super Bowl, 
Uh, and then what else? All of our four sports. So uh, we'd love to have you check us out. Uh, if you're watching this again on YouTube, quick thumbs up, quick uh, comment, and hit that subscribe button. And then also hit the little alarm in the upper corner. That'll let you know when any of our podcasts post. And uh, they're all in front of the paywall seven days a week. This is a fun week because uh, Andrew's back in on Thursdays with me. Saturdays is always a, bl a blast with Crash. And then come this Monday, we're going to have a special guest, uh, Gundacker, uh, who's going to join us. Uh, we joined his feed uh, earlier in the week, and now he's going to jump in with us. So different perspectives, trying to give our listeners and our members a look at just all different perspectives of building and strategy. So love to have you do that. And then the last thing, if you're listening on audio, I want to mention it because there's only a few days left. It's the 27th. At the end of each month, we give away a free full access one week pass to Coach Talk, and that's for our podcast audio listeners. All you have to do, regardless if it's Spotify, Apple Podca Podcasts, whatever, hit the five stars, quick comment, and then our man Omaha Joe will do the randomizer, and somebody's going to win a free week of Coach Talk. So that is it, my friend. I am excited for a phenomenal uh, slate tomorrow in the NBA. Really good slates through the weekend. We have our PGA going. I've got a few guys not getting it done so far, so I need to get them going. But uh, we'll also be posting not our weekend slate for Saturday and Sunday. The PGA, bizarre as it is, it's Friday and Saturday. So we'll be posting that tonight as opposed to tomorrow. So if you're a member or you're looking for weekend only, it still says that on FanDuel, by the way. It's funny. Uh, lineups, then we'll provide those tonight to our members as well. So how's your golf team tuned, by the way? I've been so busy, I haven't had a chance to look at your stuff. Oh, great. Yeah. Berger and company uh, doing well. So I think a couple of more of your guys started on the south course, and that's why they didn't have a great start. More of my yeah. guys were on the north course. So we're in a good spot there. I hope so. I need my guys to have some big, big days. I, I saw uh, Corey Connors over par and I was like, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. But uh, but anyway, we'll get there. And then at, I watched uh, last night the NFL pod that you and Crash did. It's great. So definitely check check that out. I think there's some good uh, good mojo going into that. And we'll see how chalky is Patrick Mahomes going to be is a question. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like Burrow as well. They are my two favorites, but yeah, we had a good time with that last night. Got it out early this week. So jump on it today. If you haven't seen it yet, get ready for the, the Sunday builds. Outstanding. All right, Andrew, great to have you back in the NBA booth where we started together. Jeez. It's been like what, two and a half. I don't know. It's been a long time that we did NBA together. So it's been quite some time. And I look forward to having you back even more when football wraps up. So yes, indeed, good stuff. Appreciate it. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow uh, solo. Uh, you know, won't have too many solos. Oh, no, tomorrow's. Yeah. And then Saturday and Monday, I've got uh, somebody with me. So definitely uh, join in. I'll get it up uh, uh, posted early enough in the morning that you guys can check out because it's a big, giant slate. All right. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, uh, listeners and members. Definitely check us out, dfscoachtalk.com. And we will be back again tomorrow when we look to crush it in DFS.